it's time for a definition, one that specifies how related two random variables are to one another. This is the notion of independence. We say that two random variables, x and y, are independent if the probability that x lies in a subset A and y lies in a subset B is really the product of the probability that x lies in A and y lies in B. This has to be true for all subsets A and B, and this is equivalent to decomposing the joint density as a product of the marginals. That is, the joint density is some function of x times some function of y. Now, each of these is an equivalent definition of independence. I tend to remember the latter more than the former. Either way, that's fine. Whatever works for you, I tend to think that for independent random variables, knowing something about the probability of one doesn't tell you anything about the probability of the other. It's kind of like coin flips, right? If you flip a coin, your friend flips a coin, these don't influence each other. They're independent random variables. Now, if you think in terms of the joint probability density, this function of x times a function of y, and take a look at what that looks like, you'll see some interesting structure in there. If you look at those contour plots and think about that as a product of the marginal density functions, I've got some function of x times some function of y, then you can see what happens as you, as you change the various marginal densities. You get different joint densities, which nevertheless have a, a sort of a nice structure in the contour plots. When you're looking at independent random variables, you can see it show up in the contour plots of the joint density. And this really becomes clear when you start looking at contour plots of dependent random variable joint densities, where you don't have that same sort of underlying symmetry or structure where one random variable can influence another. Okay, so that's what things look like, but how do we put this to use? Let's do an example. Let's consider the following problem. Let's say that you and your friend are waiting in two lines, and the wait times for those lines are independent random variables with exponential densities. What are the odds that you get through your line first before your friend gets through their line? Well, let's write out these exponential densities first of all. Let's assume that your wait time is x, your friend's wait time is y. Then your marginal density, rho x, is alpha times e to the minus alpha x, where alpha is some positive constant. Your friend's probability density is beta times e to the minus beta y. Here, x and y are both non-negative numbers. It's, it's how long you have to wait to get through the line. Now, you should check that these are, in fact, probability densities. By integrating them from 0 to infinity, make sure you get 1. Because these are independent, the joint probability density is the product of these two functions. That is, alpha times beta times e to the minus quantity alpha x plus beta y. Okay, so that's our joint probability density. How do we solve this problem? Well, the probability that your wait time x is less than your friend's wait time, y, is the integral of the probability element, that is this joint density function, over the subset where x is less than y. The limits of integration on this are going to be x goes from 0 to y, and then y goes from 0 to infinity. And we're integrating this joint probability density. Now I look at that, let's say I integrate with respect to x first, I can pull out that constant alpha times beta, and then the integral of that exponential, that's not so bad. That's going to be a minus 1 over alpha times e to the minus quantity alpha x plus beta y. I have to evaluate that as x goes from 0 to y. That gives me, with some rearrangement, beta times the integral as y goes from 0 to infinity of e to the minus beta y minus e to the minus quantity alpha plus beta y. Integrating that with respect to y, doing a little bit of algebra gives me minus e to the minus beta y plus 
beta over quantity alpha plus beta times e to the minus quantity alpha plus beta y. I evaluate that as y goes from 0 to infinity, and with a little bit of simplification, I get 1 minus beta over alpha plus beta, which in the end is alpha over alpha plus beta. Now this makes a lot of sense. This is a number between 0 and 1, as a probability ought to be, if alpha and beta were exactly the same. That is, if I had uh, the same exact type of line, then the probability that I go first is one half. Now there's more you can do. For fun, you could show that the expected wait time for both you and your friend to finish, that is, the expectation of the, the variable that is the maximum of x and y, is, with a little bit of work, the maximum of alpha and beta. That's kind of a fun problem. Maybe, maybe play around with that.